of that matchup. But this is Highlander we're talking about. Nothing is consistent and curving out. Maybe you can make an argument that for that being the bigger strength of Highlander Priest compared to two of Priest. But that's not necessarily the game plan you want to go for against Demon Hunter. Yeah, exactly. Like we were talking yesterday about how Highlander Rogue, which Bank Yugi brought and successfully qualified to the semifinals with, the difference between Highlander Rogue and Secret Rogue is that Highlander Rogue, even though it's a Highlander deck, curves out. It has minions to play on curve because the minions, the cards they're slotting in are generally one and two cost minions rather than removal spells. Whereas Highlander Priest, when they switch over to the Highlander from the Galakron variant, they're putting in Breath of the Infinite, Holy Nova, Shadow Word Ruin. It's weird tech removal cards rather than actual pressure, actual punch uh, to be throwing down, which is what uh, the Highlander Rogue does instead. So uh, I agree, it could be a bit of a tough one, and he really is looking, in my opinion, for any kind of pressure to throw down onto the board. True. And um, unless I'm going crazy, I think the Spectator is switched and that Chansu should be on the Demon Hunter on the bottom half because the Shang is not bringing Demon Hunter. Uh, so, yes. Yeah, we'll get that fixed in a second. The cameras and the names make sense. So for now, let's just refer to the classes as we talk about the matchup. And that priest hand is, I was about to say, looking pretty horrible, but he's picked up Zephyrus. Right. And so this is already the, the kind of the talking point, I suppose, is I'll just ask it quick, quickly. Is this matchup a turn two Zephyrus? Um, well, I tend to think that Zephyrus on 2 is debatable depending on what your hand looks like, but okay. this hand from the Priest is very, very expensive, so I would assume that Wild Growth is the priority here. That makes sense to me. Uh, Soul Mirror is uh, usually saved for just specifically Sociologist Militia, but... If you can ramp up with the Wild Growth, you can just use it as mid-game removal here, given that he's got the Plague of Death to supplement that as well. And uh, with Kronk's picked up Mind Flayer Kaj, these are just a couple of decent uh, curve turns for Chonsu. Um, maybe. Curve, I think, is a bit of a stretch to put it that way, because Mind Flayer without a target on this turn feels awfully slow, and the coin Kronk's would also require a six drop to follow up really cleanly. I would say it's the Demon Hunter that has the lightning fast curve. Look at this. After the Marrow Slicer, five drop of your choice into uh, either Skull or Militia or the other five drop in the near future. Yeah, you're not wrong there. That is pretty disgusting, I will say. <laughs> a lot of damage that can come through in the next few turns. Uh, Chonsu does have decent responses though. You know, this Kaj all of a sudden is extremely powerful. The Shadow Word Death, very potent in just swinging the tempo back in his favor. And uh, I know that a lot of the time you don't want to go for Galakron too early in this matchup because you want the hero power online uh, to be healing rather than generating minions. Mm -hmm. As uh, There uh -huh. we go, we get yes. switched the right way. Um, but I think in this instance, if he can snipe a decent minion with Galakron, he'd quite happily throw it down just to keep generating pressure with the hero power. Yeah, I think Blitzjung's hand can justify that after this turn. This turn is looking like a pretty simple Karj and Shadow Word death to me. Yep. Um, getting Galakron online can just give him ways to go for counter pressure because I believe Highlander Priest doesn't run enough consistent healing to justify trying to eke out the hero power, the natural hero power every turn and just outlast the Demon Hunter. I think that game plan is far too slow. Especially with a hand like this for Chansu Skull on the far left, pressure keeps going. The pressure does keep coming, but Blitzchung makes a really interesting line to try and subvert that pressure because instead of going for the Shadow of Death, he goes for absolute maximum development on this turn. And obviously, taking one damage on this turn is not really his biggest concern right now. Yeah, I think it makes sense if you are leading up into a Soul Mirror turn. It's very likely to deal with Tonsu's next threat plus the Glaive Bound going back up to the 6 mm. attack. You take one extra damage, but you get the Vile Fiend online one turn earlier. And I think Blitzchung, if he wants to stabilize later on, it would have to involve having Apotheosis in the very near future. And the Dormant minion already in play gives him more shots to stick that. Like we were saying, so, uh, the Soul Mirror usually saved for Sociologist Militia in the regular version of Priest without the Highlander effect. But Plague of Death can... Do 
uh, function as a very decent substitute to kill off all those 3-3s three later on because his biggest concern right now is just stopping any damage from going face and any board being gained from Chonsu, which, to be fair, for the moment, Blitzchung can do a very good job of locking down the board. It's true. Or it could just be the Galakron like you were talking about because he mm. doesn't quite have targets. The fact that Chonsu has taken the turn to load up with the Skull is probably the last thing Blitzchung wanted to see because his hand is built to be reactive to minions on board. Doesn't quite have mm. the punch to outlast um, a bunch of damage saved up in hand. The Solace that Blitzchung can take though is that the Militia is not that uh, wide at the moment. Spirit Jailer can change things though. So. I wonder if Chonsu is going to want oh. to go for it that way, though, as he picks up another skull. Because with this hand right now, it, it, it says to me that he really ideally uh, would like to go for a big blade dance first and then go for Militia to actually uh, stick on the board rather than just answer what Blitzchung already has in play. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking, I want a skull to just race Blitzchung without having to even go spend a turn on the board plan, which Blitzchung is much likelier <laughs> to have an answer for compared to um, just pure damage sent to the face. Having seen that a Zephyrus already. Hmm. Uh, Chonsu does need to think carefully here because he was reaching for the Marrow Slicer and then I think realized this could very well just be a Blade Dance turn here. Uh, even if he's leaving something in play for the Apotheosis, he can start to make the read, I think, that it may not be there in hand and just clearing the board might buy him some extra time. It's true. Um, as it stands, Blitzchung was representing half of Chonsu's health total on the board. Yeah. Um, he has seen a Zephyrus already, so it's not super scary, but there's a chance for Raze Dead into Zephyrus Lethal, that type of thing, where Chonsu doesn't even necessarily have to take the risk, covering all his bases here by going for the Blade Dance and still taking a lot of damage. Blitzchung is on the ropes. So, for maximum healing, he could go Penance and just Galakron, but that turns off your long-term healing. Mm. I think Blitzchung is well beyond trying to race for the game plan now that Chansu has equipped a huge Aldrak heal. Yeah, I like the idea of trying to find a big dragon here to at least put something in the way, like... Uh... The Evasive Draconid could be powerful. Spellwing obviously can find Renew or right. any other kind of healing effect. Double wave, usually insane off of Spellkin, but right now, the last thing the Blitzchung needs. Yep. However, Chonsu doesn't quite have the lethal in hand yet. Two fragments in the deck, according to the deck tracker. Mm -hmm. So it's not a terrible militia. Marrow Slicer, he can get four rushers and keep himself with one. Oh, five. Mm, tracker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the question really there was whether you want to prioritize board control or damage to face, because he could of course taken a very clean trade with the weapon and left himself two more skulls on the board. Um, but I think uh, you know, given that you are very much expecting your opponent to have a hand chock full of removal, I really, really like just prioritizing damage in any way possible. I like that too. And he gets the best of both worlds, really, by also removing the board, making sure there's no apotheosis targets possible. Yeah. Uh, for Blitzjung now, he needs a miracle one way or another. There's a full clear available with Pyro, Nova, and Death. Mm. But he only gets to heal for uh, four total. And he doesn't really end up with a board after that. Is there any way... Pyro. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking if there's any way he can go for Alex Straza plus Wave in order to try and uh, set up for, like, an actual turn that does something on the following turn. He would be four damage off lethal, which with a twin slice, or second slice, sorry, that he knows to be in hand, probably is just too scary. Looks like he is going to try for a longer turn game plan. This does leave a couple more damage on board compared to the other line, but gives him potential minions from the hero power to discover on the next turn. Seven. Kane is ten. Second size is twelve. A little bit short, but Chansu has another draw. 
Yep, just keep the keep the draw coming. The pressure on board is nice, but you're definitely expecting it to be cleared. At the very least, though, it stops Blitzchung from being able to develop any of his own game plans. And on closer inspection, Blitzchung's best chance at healing out of range, I believe, was an Apotheosis top deck to go along with the Pyro. So I think looking at it in the long term, holding Pyro gives him a chance to win the game as opposed to just mm. surviving one turn longer. That's a good point. I mean, I guess like I, we were looking at it in different ways. I was thinking like he, uh, sorry, he has to hit Nazari off of Dragon Queen for there to be any real chance. But I guess the Pyromancer Apotheosis plan is a little bit more achievable on average. Ah, uh, Chansu's hand is almost entirely reactive. Mm. As long as he holds on to the cane should be okay. This is still a pretty threatening board and he pushes the incremental damage. Let's jump's been pushed off of the healing hero power. Interesting. Goes with the swing here. I mean I was thinking he'd probably save it because he still has uh blade dance that he maybe wants to combo with something, but I guess just pushing maximum face while he can to give himself more yep. mana. Mm-hmm. Ah. Uh. This could be the Pyro clear turn once again, but if you can give give up the Pyro here, it kind of means that Blitzchung's committing to trying to uh, race Chansu instead of really healing for much more in the long term, which is the same problem as before. There are no miracle outcomes off of Lazul, are there? Like, nothing that's game-winning if you get it from the Demon Hunter deck. Yes, the second skull? He's already played both, hasn't he, at this oh, point? Oh, has he? Time is running out. Okay, going for the pyro clear line. He does hit a punt, which, from where Blitzchung is sad, could be additional heal, but of course we can see this cane. Yeah, the deck's getting oh. shuffled through faster and faster. It's only going to be lasting so long as well. Lapidary comes down, yet more damage. Kane going onto the board here, which means obviously Chonsu is setting up lethal on the following turn if he can get a single point of damage from his deck. Uh, but potentially if Blitzchunk could just clear here and then he doesn't get it, is the Skeletal Drake the winner? Uh, but he can't do both in one turn, right? I think Chonsu mm. noticed that he can put Blitzchung below Ray's dead range. Like, Blitzchung is not allowed to play right. that card. Like, putting them at two is kind of like stopping Warlock from happening. That's a very good point. So that removes a potential Resurrect Zephyrus out, and that is going to be game one in the books. Chansu taking the win with Demon Hunter, as we were kind of predicting, because this Highlander Priest does not heal as consistently. Yeah, this is, I think, the real problem for it. It's the the fact that it doesn't heal quite so much, as you exactly put. And also the, the point I was trying to raise at the start, which is that it wasn't really developing very much at the end. You know, its hand was just full of half of a good uh, hand. It had uh, a pretty useless card in the Plague of Death, the Pyromancer. He wanted to save it for the Apotheosis, but he only has one of each in his deck. Holy Nova not doing very much. He just wanted actual cards to throw onto the board, minions to punch in the face, because that is how you dominate the matchup. Very possibly if Chonsu hadn't had the silence magic, or dispel magic, sorry, at the start, in order to get rid of the Kaj death rattle, then there could have been a board control route open. Uh, but for Blitzchung, he just didn't have the tools necessary to fight back on board, which is almost always when you lose against Demon Hunter. I would agree. But now that Chonsu has gotten the Demon Hunter out of the way, we were talking about how at the beginning of the series, it seemed like Chansu's DH was the trump card. So mm. in terms of overall uh, series implications, I guess Blitzchung can't be too disappointed that that deck got a win at some point. I'm just kind of worried about his Highlander Priest as a whole because I'm not a big believer in its consistency. What I will say is it maybe has some strength against the two of Priest in particular because it can outvalue that matchup. Maybe. That'll be a, a real first time for APAC, a match that l might last more than 15 minutes. Can you even oh, imagine, Gia? We had, we had yesterday, Derek, remember? We went seven hours, a full Europe broadcast. 
I think that my mind has actually deleted that from its memory logs. It's just that was that was too much work for a single day. Imagine doing a full day here. I can't imagine it. Uh, but before we can head into the second game of the series, we are going to go to a short break to let our players get ready. And when we come back, we are going to be continuing Chonsu up against Blitzchung. The winner gets to the honor of fighting up against Tom60229. And the winner of that can go to the semifinals on Sunday. We'll find out who it is after. We're in the midst of our first match of the day. Blitzchung up against Chonsu, trying to find out who's going to go through to the winner's bracket match. And as you so eloquently put, Gia, the Demon Hunter taking the win. Not the biggest of deals for Chonsu, even though he is now 1-0 up. As uh, things could maybe turn around now. Both the Warriors out of the way, which means Blitzchung has to take a win with all three of the, uh, the Mage, the Rogue, and the Highlander Priest versus the uh, regular priest and the mage on the other side for Chonsu. How are you liking the chances for Blitzchunk to turn things around? I think he still got a pretty good shot. The Highlander priest up against mage is what we'll be viewing next. And already I'm kind of wondering, would I rather be a Highlander priest here or would I be the two of priest? And I can talk mostly from the mage perspective, like which would I rather face? And to be honest, I'd rather face the two of priest because they have less capability of generating a win condition that I don't necessarily expect. I feel that as the mage, you have 
more time to build up your resources. And even if they get ahead on the early board, they're not going to kill you anytime soon. So you can just wait to draw your evocation and put together another combo. I think Highlander Priest can maybe curve out and put the pressure on the mage a little bit more. Interesting. I, I think I disagree, actually, there. Uh, okay. in, in my experience, uh, the the ability for regular non-Highlander priests to go Sethic Veilweaver, Raise Dead, Kaj, Double Twilight Drake now thrown in there as well, they have so much redundancy in that early game curve that they're just always hitting those power early turns. Uh, and so even as you correctly say, their late game isn't quite so robust in terms of actually winning the game. I think by the time Priest has won those early, if they win turns like 1 through 5 to 6, uh, they don't really need a strong end game. They just keep value trading you and healing up their minions, and it's very difficult to pull it back. It can be. Um, my mind thinks back to the Allen game that we watched yesterday, where he did have a very strong opener as Priest and got a lock on the board, but because he wasn't able to close out the game just because the deck mm. didn't provide him with ways of putting together an earlier lethal, uh, the mage had time to amass the second push and from there outvalue him. So I'd be curious um, how big of a role Zephyrus will have in this matchup because it can always threaten lethal if it's not played early on for a wild growth, which Blitzchung has not drawn it early enough to do so. Exactly. I mean, there's there's just so much going on already here. Blitzchung yeah. holding back on the Zephyrus clearly for a more uh, concrete purpose than just playing it on the board for one of the three cost cards. Shonsu playing out all his one mana spells as well with the Tome of Intellect and the Mirror Images there. Clearly not setting up for a big Apprentice Cyclone turn without the Evocation and instead trying to dump cards for the Evocation on this turn. Yeah, it's interesting. I usually go about that in the opposite order where I do the... Oh my gosh, another Ooh. Apprentice! I do the Apprentice Cyclone turn with the one cost spells and then I hold on to Evocation. Right. But this order seems like it's going to work out decently well for Chansu because he also still gets to refill with his three spells from the Mana Cyclone. He does, uh, but he only gets that many spaces if he plays out the Violet Spellwing, which unfortunately for him, is the second elemental needed to complete the side quest. I guess the thinking for him is he always is going to want to play Raz anyway next turn, so he doesn't want to be locking himself into playing the Spellwing. But I'm not entirely sure I agree. I think three spells from your deck in this matchup is huge. Yeah, it definitely seems so. I think it would depend on what Chansu generates off the Cyclone, which of course he can't predict. Yeah. He has ended up with reactive cards instead of a refill, so it might work out badly for him because it looks like Blitzchung is eyeing the Hyro clear. It does, however, depend on this Renew getting something cheap. Oh no! Too expensive! Absolutely nothing. There's literally nothing he can even target with Shadow of Death as well. This is a disaster! Does he have to commit Zephyrus now? Does Zephyrus even recognize Pyro? I don't think it does. It doesn't recognize Pyro, but it might give you Moonfire anyway, just because you're at zero mana, right? Maybe. To kill off the Apprentice yeah. and everything's damaged. I mean, that was risky for Blitzchung, not gonna lie. I yeah. might have caved and played Zephyrus there myself, but we understand the importance of holding onto that, right? He was taking the risk because, as we were saying at the beginning, Zephyrus can represent lethal, or Chansu doesn't expect it. It can represent a solid win con. Indeed. Chansu was definitely hoping for the missiles to be a little bit friendlier there because this Raz is not the cleanest anymore. Yeah, trade in the 2-2 two, two drops, but gets to keep the Apprentice, so no big deal for Chansu, I would assume. And Blitzchung now... If he wants to get rid of these, it still involves um, Zephyrus. He can just get rid of the Apprentice and leave the Raz for now. Oh, it feels quite so... Quite committed. <laughs> yeah, it feels so bad though, right? Like, if they play any spell damage minion, it dies instantly. Even literally just a ping, of course, could do the job as well. Mm -hmm. I think Blitzchung, he's clearly indicated he's holding onto this Zephyrus for something mm -hmm. bigger than a board clear. So he's just hoping to maybe land the 50-50 with a Galakron if there's another minion played, or sometimes they don't play a minion. And uh, I, I do think overall, even this has, though this has not worked out well for Blitzchunk, that this is a very smart way to go about it. Because unless you're being blown out of the game right at the start, this can get very long, this matchup. A lot mm -hmm. of value generation. And so saving Zephyrus for the massive giant Conjurer's Calling turn 
or even just for like a Tyrion later on if you're putting forward a lot of pressure, uh, is I think much more valuable. I agree. Let me change your In terms of being super greedy with the value, I don't think it's worth passing up a football shadow mm. priest here. It's just too clean. You get maximum board control, and he has acolyte anyway to potentially steal something else. A giant. War. Okay. You probably don't pick June Sculptor there, but I was kind of <laughs> tempted by June Sculptor. Like, you could get four yeah, mage okay. minions on this turn. Oh, oh no, I know, sorry, I know. But <laughs> I think this is a decent cyclone turn with a okay. combustion and ray of frost. I think so too. I was getting a little bit greedy there. <laughs> Worth noting though that Shansu doesn't run a natural uh, conjurer's calling in his list. This is the double arcane breath of the cobalt right. spellkin version of mage. So the giant is a little bit harder to make maximum use of. But you know, it's a generated one. I don't mind a zero mana 8-8 eight, eight here. Seems good. Oh, he's holding it though. Yeah, there were a couple oh, of things the side going quest, on there. Right? Yeah. It's well, yes. Step one is side quest, but then he got the cloud prince, which could have activated it next turn as well. I, I think the bigger thing is that his opponent knows that it's not counter spell anymore. So both soul mirror and now plague of death are active going into turn nine, and I think this board, honestly, if he had them, would be kind of tempting enough to go for it anyway. Maybe. Look at this Murazond. Uh, yeah, that's pretty insane. Uh huh. He gets Solarian, Cyclone, Combustion, Ray of Frost, I think. Lol. And some more stuff, but that's not a great target to start. Oh, with. He gets his own apprentice. His own Astromancer as well. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, Chelsea's no! like, what's happening? Okay. Hmm. That didn't go very well. It didn't? But it still gave Blitzchung tons of resources, I think. Yeah, as long as he doesn't get too greedy in terms of saving the spells, because at this point, he's kind of scared of dying soonish. That's fair. They could very possibly have generated some extra burn along the way. Mm -hmm. Well, let's take our three spells. Let's almost certainly flame strike, and then let's punch them for a lot of damage along the way. How much does rolling fireball accomplish here? Uh, oh, yeah. Good. Well, here, yeah. <laughs> Okay, sure, even better. Rolling Fireball lets him play, I guess, the Cloud Prince if you want it on board, but at this point, he's only really scared of Soul Mirror, Plague of Death, and maybe Zephyrus, like you were mentioning, so maybe right. don't overcommit to the board. Like, obviously, he's trying to figure out here what? can I fit in Cram Session as well? Like, if he goes Steward, Rolling Fireball, does he just throw away an Arcane Breath to make room for another card from his deck? You can probably slow play it here and not go for the cram session quite yet, I think. Those are all very valid arguments. I kind of like the idea of cramming, though, just to get you closer okay. to the additional giants. Because if he is committing to uh, going all in on this board, he just wants to make sure he has the next wave readily available after right. he sees one of the big sweeping AoEs. Like he's holding on, though. Yeah, now that he's got a decent cramp session on the next turn. Exactly. He's still got the Astromancer. He can try and let the one on board die, try and draw through to the Astromancer Solarian Prime in his deck. Uh, we are, you'd have to imagine, looking at a Soul Mirror now. This looks pretty clean. I would agree. Got Splits Chung, a Prime of his own. And he has the Zephyrus to fall back on for the next board clear because this is a generated mana giant. Has to be scared of the two natural ones in the deck. Is there some fun stealing that can happen with Breath of the Infinite? Can you isolate the giant, steal it with the Cabal Acolyte? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Like, if yeah. you could tell Zephyrus to give you something specific. Right, right. If you go I would land on Soul Mirror here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm not seeing it exactly. Is Nether a Brawl? Interesting. He wants the full clear, but that means minus Prime for Blitz. Oh! He has a Prime in his own deck already, so if he shuffled another Prime, that would shut off Alex Straza. Oh my Zephyrus god, really? Yeah. <laughs> 
You're right. Yeah. <laughs> I did not even think of that. Blitzchung. Fantastic spot from Blitzchung. My goodness. Well done you as well. That that went completely over my head. Yeah, if you had gone for Soul Mirror, that would have shut off his own Zephyrus indefinitely. Your mind is not your own. But still pretty problematic for Blitzchung. He has the Apotheosis now. But <laughs> does he even want to steal the Solarian? Okay, he's played Zephyrus, so I think it's fine to not have your Alex Straza, which you haven't done yet, be active. Exactly. It's like, it's prime. It's still one of the best cards, if not like the best single card you can get in the game at the moment. Ooh. Dance, puppet. The sabers. Dance. Pretty interesting for Chance. Yeah, any mana you can get at this point is worth a lot with all the card draw he has. Tough for Blitzchung. Like, you almost never want to pre-commit Apotheosis, but it's getting to the point where if he doesn't commit it, he could just die on the spot. Yeah, still unlikely, but it's always something you have to be afraid of. And with the dragon found, now things are going to start getting very scary for Blitzchung. Yeah, Arcane Breaths plus Combustion. There must be mm -hmm. a clear here somewhere. Or he could just rip the Flame Strike and get the clunkiest card out of his hand. Oh, well, lab makes partner makes it very simple. It's so clean now. So I mean, you lab might. Lab partner. Uh, combustion goes up to six, so you can point it at the apprentice and it clears both of the four health minions, and then you can go another arcane breath on the Solarian. Exactly, yeah. The one thing I'm wondering is if you just take. If you want to play both arcane breaths at this point, just so that you have like more information about what your hand is going to be, it's probably not worth it. Oh my goodness, he gets another one here. So much value. It's insane. He's just got to go. Like, you got to be playing quickly now to get all oh, this value down. I guess he's not playing any of them. At oh, sorry. He'll have another mana after this thing attacks, so he can. <laughs> oh, that was insane. All right, let's get some damage. That's damage. Oh, how does Blitzjunk pull this one back? He's already used Zephyrus and Pyromancer. <sighs> yeah, like... Apotheosis is kind of trapped. Soul Mirror Breath is the uh, the clear on this turn. Uh, and he'd even have one mana left over. Believe for him. <laughs> what about... Seems like he's forced into it. But there's little to no way back into the game after that, I believe. Is it yeah. desperate enough to search for Volpera into something? Uh, Volpera into what? Shadow Madness? Question mark? Doesn't really do enough. You're right. I'm not seeing Just much better. Train of Renews, maybe? <laughs> yeah. What about Pain? Reasonable. You could just go for a 7 7 off of mind games. Although I think you're just pretty much conceding on the spot right there. This has this to be is, game. Yeah. Certainly there must be a way to find lethal here for Shansu. I would yeah, just. Breath. breath, breath, ray, ray, attack face, end with the missiles. It's literally just lethal in hand. Missiles. That's gotta be it. Yep, nicely done by Chonsu. It was, you know, a bit of a tough spot from Blitzchung, and like you said, a really good spot on the Zephyrus to not let himself be baited into deactivating it with both of the primes in his deck. Uh, but the main thing is really just that Chonsu was put under absolutely no pressure whatsoever over the course of that game. Like, even though there was the uh, dormant minion thrown down at the start in the imprisoned Wild Fiend, it still just wasn't enough to push him out of the game as the. Uh, the Raz Apprentice starting hand was just too powerful. I mean, fair play to Chonsu. I honestly would not have gone for the early lines that he took by throwing out the one cost spells in order to make room for both Apprentice, uh, sorry, both Cyclone and Evocation in one yeah. turn, where we talk about those cards tend to have a bit of anti synergy, but when you have a certain amount of mana and can optimize the space in your hand, you can still get a pretty strong turn done with both of those together. And Chonsu navigated that. Very, very cleanly.
Yeah, I think that was done very nicely by Chauncey. Like, the one question I have was about whether he should have played the Cyclone and the Spellwing all on the same turn. But the fact that he was setting up for the Raz afterwards, like, it, there's obvious downsides, but I'm 100% sure he'd factored all of that in and came up with the conclusion that Raz was just stronger than drawing the three spells from his deck guaranteed, which is very reasonable. You know, there's a fair few uh, elementals in the deck. You're likely to be able to get the draw at some point and uh, he went for the risky line of doing that and it paid off beautifully he got the draw and he got the raz almost knocked over my water bowl uh, everything going perfectly for him there and so in the next series uh, the next game in the series thank you uh it is going to be blitzchung trying to get a triple sweep here against uh what is left now for chonsu just the priest right the two of right. priest that has been uh, on the other side, in the Highlander variant, going disastrously wrong so far for Blitzchunk. Yeah, it's not even looked close in both of the games leading up to this final one. And of the matchups, to be fair, I believe Blitzchunk would have the best chance on this Highlander Priest up against Chansu's own Priest. This does seem like a matchup that goes, you know, relatively slow enough to the point where Blitzchunk can actually see the majority of his deck and actually get the value from it. Because... When, he, when I was talking about Highlander Priest, a lot of it was theoretical. Like, yes, they do have more value, but do they have the time to actually use all of that value? In a lot of the other matchups, not so much, but maybe here. Maybe. We shall have to see. Uh, I think that the real tough one is, of course, as you were saying early on, the uh, Priest versus Priest matchup for Chun. So I think that is finally where the Highlander version does definitely start to shine. Uh, but I mean, it's worth saying again now, like, I wonder how much better of a hand you can really be looking for as the Highlander Priest. Like, in the late game, as we approach turn 9 or 10, the Priest hand has been looking a little dead. But he's hit Zephyrus on curve both games so far. It's not like he's had nothing to do in the early game, but it's just not transitioning to a victory for Blitzjump. Very true. And honestly, because I see this matchup as going quite late, not necessarily as tempo-heavy, that... Um, I would be used to seeing from Blitzchunk's playstyle. I'm pretty curious how he approaches it because mm. this um, strikes me as something that his constant practice partner, Kin, would be more comfortable with. Yeah, definitely. It's not the typically the kind of matchup that Blitzchung would favor. But I will say it's kind of worth talking about now if we do get into the Priest Mirror, which is exactly what we've got up next. Uh, the, the, the texture of the, this matchup has very much changed since the expansion of Scholomance Academy coming out because beforehand in the Priest Mirror, it was as slow and grindy as you can possibly go. Like the entirety of the matchup in the late game felt like who gets Galakron first and then who can generate the most reliquary primes to shuffle into your deck mm -hmm. and just extend fatigue. But in my opinion now, it's it's become a lot more tempo-heavy, which could favor Blitzchung's playstyle. Maybe, but also could favor Chansu's decklist in terms of being able to put down the Maybe. threats more consistently early on. But uh, I only can say that because Chansu is running the double Twilight Drake version. Without those, I would have a hard time seeing how Chansu could get enough tempo to actually close out the game it against Highland. Uh, also well, worth noting that, of course, uh, Blitzchung does run Mindrender, Elusha, and mm. Galakron, two cards that used to be included in the Two of's Priest as well, but have largely fallen out of favor and could maybe give him advantage in the late game. And I think that just perfectly sets the stage, doesn't it? Is that we can look from card to card, piece things together, and realize fairly quickly Chonsu's the aggressor in this matchup. He is on the beatdown plan with double Twilight Drake. All those early minions, the two Sethic Veil Weavers can be huge as well. Tempo Pyromancer here, I think, says it all. He is trying to get Blitzchung as quick as he can. Yep. In many other matchups, you'd want to hold on to Pyro as a defensive measure and a board clear with Apotheosis. But if you wait super long against the Highlander Priest, they're perfectly happy to wait you out as well. And then they would just Ooh. win off of value because they have Galakron as an infinite minion generator question for Blitzchung is whether this is already worth penance. And he doesn't quite have anything to do until turn 5, so he's holding on for now, because he would heal back up the damage from Pyro anyway. Oh, sign me up for a mirror zone there. There was, like, the kind of talk you could have about how Coin was pretty good there to coin out Cobalt Spellkin, but for the most part, mirror zone is undeniably one of the best minions in this matchup. No kidding. No cap. On a stack. 
So is this tempo Karj as well? I feel like Karj is super valuable, oh. but we've talked about the value. I mean, the beatdown game plan. He has Cobalt's Falcon to follow. Clearly so. This My is goodness. not the Priest Mirror we knew, Darok. This Karj has nothing in it. <laughs> This is an APAC Priest Mirror right here, Gia. Yeah. This is just trying to finish things in about 10 minutes uh, so that we're back to the usual pace uh, of the show that we've come to expect. And, I mean, it, it works out for Chonsu. He's got to play next turn. He'll surely be able to find something for turn 6 with all the one-mana spells he'll be generating as well. Now, question for Blitzchung is, now that he's seen Karj played out to not copy anything, does that mean he's allowed to go for a relatively low-value Zephyrus here? With the coin, he could easily clear this with Shadow Madness. Or he could just develop his Cobalt Spellkin and maybe react to the next board, but it's possible that he takes more damage in the long run with that line. Well, this is where things, in my opinion, get really interesting against Priest, is if they're playing out their uh, high-value minions without the effect, you can start to make the read, I think, on Raise Dead being in hand, because that's when they start playing these cards out for low value. So maybe you think it's fairly likely that there will be another Karj coming down after it dies. However, if you take the Shadow Madness here, you can deny them the ability to resurrect Taj, but maybe you'd rather deny them the value of going for the Lazul because they're going to steal all your Murazons and your Galakrond that you just found. I do think Lazul is a higher value target to deny. Uh, Karj at the moment, it doesn't have a good target, and if eventually Blitzchung gives the Karj a good target, he has the seal on it, potentially, with the Cabal Acolyte Wave of Apathy. I Very think it's true. absolutely correct to steal Lazul instead. Mm. Chonsu, Twilight Drake, Holy Smite, pretty clean, swing back to tempo. Job done. I like that a lot. That spends all his mana, which passes Chonsu's one and only check for whether it's a good Hearthstone play, apparently. <laughs> That's the greatest spells to get for this matchup. Okay, no inner fire. That's what I think he was really looking for there to just start again, applying the pressure, taking these value trades. But Holy Smite is a close second. Yeah, he'll settle. Ooh, oh man, but the Gala's already in hand. Yeah. It's like, I was so excited for Blitzchuck <laughs> to have a play on curve, but now he is digging with the Renew instead, and all of these are not good on this turn. But actually, you can take the death and just inner fire. Uh, that's true. That's true. It's, he doesn't have anything else to spend his mana on, so I would just take the death. Is that worth it to kill a 3-5? Like, you're playing Galakron next turn, so trying to isolate this minion, or at least narrow things down, does have a lot of merit, I agree. It just seems so overly zealous. Like, it's a 3-5. Do you have to use two cards to kill it? Um, I think his hand, which is chock full of value for the yeah. next few turns, completely allows him oh, to be overzealous in killing the Cobalt Falcon. I just don't want to take an additional three here and leave the minion up with nothing better to do with this. Oh, sorry. This is the three oh. of the Twilight Jake as well. Okay, yeah. <laughs> nice job, Blitzchung. That's a pretty cool play right there. Good job, yeah. Blitzchung. <laughs> uses all his mana. I am so happy. Yep. Chonsu's, yeah, Chonsu genuinely meant there. Well played. Good job spending all your mana there. He's ignoring the fact that it killed a better minion. He's just, oh, well, you found the line to spend all your mana. <laughs> a connoisseur, I see. Alright, time for Blitzchung to swing back the tempo a little bit here. Oh, he's going for the full I thought this was going to be Divine Shield Rush, honestly. Me too. Me too. I was a little surprised by that. Like, if you're going rush Divine Shields, you're of course walking slap bang into uh, a steal, which I think is something that Blitzchung is very much considering. He doesn't want to have just one strong minion on the board because your opponent with all these one mana spells is almost guaranteed to have Wave of Apathy. And there's three stealer minions thrown in there as well. Fair. It just seems like, based on the entire way Blitzchung's been playing here, Zephyrus for Shadow Madness, spending all his mana to deal with a Twilight Drake, he just wants to be as defensive as possible because his deck is built to win the long game by virtue of this one card right here, Callum. Yeah, exactly. He's prioritizing getting it online instead of stealing the Murazon on the other side. 
Which, again, it, it functions as to what I was saying. He doesn't want to just put something big on the board because at that point, with a one attack Murazond on his side, his opponent just literally needs any of the three Steeler minions. They wouldn't even need Wave of Apathy at that point, and it can be stolen right back. He's just not wanting to develop it. True. All right. Chansu finding ways to keep the pressure going, which is absolutely important because he is 100% the aggressor here. The plus health on these Siamats is huge because now it's not just as simple as Breath and Kronks. But he can just mm -hmm. steal and um, delay for now. That's fine. Steal and delay. So you like the idea of going for the... Uh, yeah, big, yeah. Well. yeah, that makes sense. The other 7-8 goes down to 1-8. And he has walked into the problem you were talking about for turn after turn now, but I don't think he could have afforded to take any more damage there. Agreed. He tried as hard as he could to not oh! go for it, but in the end, he it wasn't good the... enough. He that is pretty Marathon. insane. Uh, so it's unfortunate that he gets Cabal Shadow Priest instead of Cabal Acolyte because the battle cry right. could not activate, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, to steal right back. But obviously still an incredibly powerful generation there. I, I mean, consider... it's also... Pretty strong right now, potentially. Mm. Could have just given him a Shadow Priest and the Mirazon and Cast Wave on the other side. But this is quite a strong development as well for Tansu, and he has the Muro for the next um, board development. Yeah, I, I like that Tansu's going for this. I think he smelt weakness from Blitzchung in terms of his ability to clear the board. And so he's trying to actually keep his opponent's side clear whilst keeping his board in play, rather than letting there be tension on the board, which uh, should allow him to push quite a bit of damage here unless Blitzchung finds a strong response. Uh, I'm still looking at the Breath plus Kronks, but it leaves the Twin mm. Tyrant. He can fit in Radiance. Uh, there's a there's... Siamat line, I think. Right, Breath plus Siamat, which is, again, kills everything but the Twin Tyrant. Right. But this does give him the development that he's been lacking so far. And I think he might. Yeah, now he's going for the coin shield. He's realizing that the steel wasn't there on the other side. Now he's safe to develop these minions. Or he's got three Lazuls in hand. <laughs> <laughs> you think this is your time? Okay. It is a breath and a Siomat for Chonsu. Pretty good. That's a good order as well. Oh, it didn't matter. Sorry, he has a dragon in hand. Indeed. This one needs help. He does. This Murazond gets him a Murazond, which is not going to be good enough quite yet. Right. He can dig for Wave of Apathy, which he can't know for sure is in hand, but with the amount of one mana spells that have been generated, you know, th there's a reasonable chance that you can expect to dig that out. This is a big dig. Is this just triple play Lazul and just steal all of their waves? <laughs> I think it's fine, right? <laughs> Maybe uh, the last one you can take something different, but Blitzchung just needs stall and then his deck will do the rest. Oh God, this is just <laughs> I love it! Turning into Macbeth, we've just got the three witches now. <laughs> and Blitzchung cannot die. Wicked Witch of the West, the East, and <laughs> the Center, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, the lesser known Middle Witch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, you were thinking of Macbeth, I was thinking of Wicked. <laughs> Both great pieces of art, I'm not here to judge. And Chonsu knows very likely that this next board is going to get pseudo frozen, but the chip jam damage he gets every turn is not to be neglected. At some point, Lichung still needs to deal with the board. Especially since he doesn't have the constant heal hero power. This is just such peak priest toxicity. Like, let's try to see one wave of apathy and he's like, bingo, we got him, boys. Let's just go in, get all three of them right now and not let them do anything for three turns. Oh, if the Twilight Drake had one less health, this would be a very clean prompt. <sighs> I mean... Yes, you can look at Kronks to go for the clear. I'm kind of looking at Mirazond, though. Like, it looks 
fairly powerful. You get a 4-1, obviously, on the Twilight Drake, which isn't amazing, but Raised Dead is powerful. You get so much value from yeah. it. No, that, that's totally fair, right? You can get the big board development and yeah. go for Murazon and go for Wave of Apathy. And he sets up counter lethal with the Kronks in hand. Yeah, exactly. I really the, like the this Kronk, line. Yeah, saving this can just help him close out the game sooner. And yes, he knows there are waves on the other side, but... Um, oh, is it... Is it still lethal even if there's a wave on the other side if Chonsu doesn't trade anything? Uh, if he doesn't clear anything off, then by quite a margin, right? Because he'd get right. uh, plus 12 damage, which would do it. Even with mm -hmm. the heal. Right. Yeah, great setup from Blitzchung. There's also just enough board space as well. To get the cross down. And Chotsu oh! has to know this, right? He has to trade something, surely! Well, what? he was just gonna Radiance. He's gonna Radiance, I suppose. No Radiance? What happened here? He's just dead! Chonsu, hello? What are you doing, buddy? I don't know! At the very least, the Twilight Drake was gonna trade, right? And Or play, Something. like, Radiance? He has four Radiances in hand! That I'm waiting for us. I want like a reaction a from Chonsu! I want him to realize that something went wrong there! That was just a single card he left himself dead to. Like, I know it's a Highlander uh -huh. deck, but why? It just wasn't necessary for him to do that. He could have stabilized at a higher health total. Yeah, and uh, but Chung had also played Raised Dead, so there was a potential to get the Zephyrus back even for another lethal. It's not even just Crocs. Right. So I don't know what Chansu was thinking there other than maybe just tunneling on trying to close the game out a little too quickly. Yeah. It just feels bad to die with four Radiances in hand, four mana floated. It didn't yeah, seem I mean, like there was any reason to save them. I think that that was a case most likely of, uh, you know, what you and I were talking about at the start, which is undeniably that at a fundamental level, Chonsu clearly understood he was the aggressor, which is the correct way to approach the matchup. I think he maybe had the blinkers on, though, where he didn't then appreciate that there is the real potential for counter lethal. He needs to be considering uh, the ability for his opponent to kill him. You can't just launch everything face every turn and not even consider the pushback potential uh, because you're just going to die. You can't be making those kind of plays at this level. I'm trying to think, did he maybe know there was a Murazond in the next hand from Blitzchung or something? Maybe he didn't want to play Radiance so that Blitzchung couldn't get Radiance, but at that point, you still take some trades to not die to Trunks. I'm, I'm not seeing it, but uh, yeah. Despite us having a very, very long day yesterday, I do hope that Chonsu can dial it back a bit and think through the turns. However, I have to praise Blitzchung on that one because he did set that up very deliberately. I was suggesting Kronk's AoEs for a long, long time, forgetting that it was his best avenue to actually close out the game. I think that was very well played from Blitzchung at all points. I think that his uh, res reluctance, sorry, I should say, to playing out, as I've said it multiple times, that single minion so that it could be stolen. At one point, like you said, he was forced into it. He tested the waters with that Cabal Shadow Priest play, realized there was no stealing effect. Then he started developing the big minions. He had a very strong realization of what Chonsu had in his hand at all points in the game and played to that very, very effectively. Uh, it was just, at the end, uh, an unfortunate way to close things out because I think that would have actually been a very interesting end game to the Priest Mirror uh, that we unfortunately will not get to see. But we do move on to the Mage versus Priest matchup. And Blitzchung, with the signature now by this point, one of Firebrand in the list, is rocking a pretty decent curve to start out. Yeah, this is the classic uh, inclusion here for Blitzchung on Firebrand to fight back against some of the tempo matchups, which honestly, while it's not usually very good in this matchup, Pretty good here because quite clearly Chonsu is going again for the maximum tempo game plan right from the get. -go. Oh yes, and he's got a good curve for himself. Lazul mm. into evasive Faewing into Cobalt Falcon with the Soul Mirror waiting in his back pocket. Oh my goodness, does Blitzchung just go? <laughs> no, there's no there's no payoff. But he doesn't have much better to do, right? Because if you just play Firebrand, it's dead to the Twilight Drake hmm. trade. It's so tough. Like, it's it's a decent turn with the Apprentice Evocation. You're likely to clear off the Twilight Drake. 
It's just, is it strong enough? Is it going to get you enough stuff to do afterwards to carry on in the game? Because he doesn't have Cyclone, he doesn't have Giant. The mana isn't there to be able to play Arcane Intellect off of it. You really want four mana, I think, before you're going for Apprentice Evocation, if you want a value play off of it. You could go for a reasonably likely clear on the Twilight Drake by trading in the Violet Spellwing. Then you go for the Missiles before you trade in the Solaria. And then you have a ping by that point. So... It is very slow and you end up behind on board. But I do agree with the patience on the evocation here at the very least. Yeah, uh, I think it's just, given the low value of his hand right now, he's going to need something a little bit more. But Chonsu now has <laughs> perfect <laughs> <eyes>. information. <laughs> also, just turn into the eye emoji there. <laughs> he saw Prentice evocation. <laughs> Top five moment. Ooh, okay. Well, he doesn't know about that, at least. I'll tell you that. Mm-hmm. Shuffle a prime to the top of your deck. A little bit of wasted damage, but it's fine. Blitzchung just wanted to clear the board. And the Beowing is pretty problematic because he can't target it with the Apprentice skills. But oh my gosh, the AI is a big deal. Yeah, I think that means you're probably holding off for another turn. Like not being able to uh, cast it with Ray, Brain Freeze, Frostbolt... Uh... All of those cards, it's just too devastating and you've got to wait one more turn. Ooh. And getting another evocation, though, is bananas. And he doesn't even pick it! What? Really? 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 I am shocked. I am shocked. You have two apprentices, so you want two evocation. That's how my brain works, at least. <laughs> two little toys for two little boys. It's the perfect evocation in double apprentice hand. Someday I'll be just like you. I don't know. Like... Really wanted to protect the firebrand. Uh -oh. Oy, oy, oy. Yikes. oh no, leave that, leave that. Oh, oh, leave it, leave it, right? It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if you just freeze it twice, it's actually pretty good to leave there, yeah. He's making room with evocation. Okay, may you kind of want to cycle because he's not doing anything with this hand because he didn't take the other evocation next turn. Aw. Well, he could prime next turn, to be fair, but I still want the cycle. And I kind of want the Conjurer's Call. Okay, he picked up Cyclone now, but the Conjurer was doubly useful because you keep the Wind Spell. Yes, the Conjurer's Calling was interesting, I agree. I, I think at this point I'd rather take three spells um, off of the Cyclone, uh, but it's a good fair. point you bring up. Didn't have any particularly good <laughs> targets. Oh, this is... <laughs> Light Rock, oh, Radiant oh, Elemental 2.0. The Arcane Breath is insane to get here as well, to keep the combo going. Yeah. Like, he can this just get so, so much value. <laughs> oh, he gets I'm having tons of fun. Oh, discover a God spell as dragon. well. Dragon. God, oh. another targeting spell and another targeting spell. Hello? This is insane. Both sides. Another soul mirror, why don't you? Embalming ritual keeps him going. Power word shield. Jeez. <laughs> he just straight up played more spells than Blitzchung. Just priest His things. mana giant that he would generate at some point because this is priest is going to be cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And now we've seen the priest degeneracy. Now let's see the mage degeneracy with Salarian yep. Prime obviously drawn as the first card after it was shuffled in. Flame Strike, and it's already got its money's worth right there. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Rent is cleared. Price is averted for now at least. I don't know, but I wish he had a cup, another evocation to keep the jet degeneracy going. Yeah. I uh, I would also have liked that play a little bit more. Uh, interesting line here with double soul mirror in hand. It's pretty good to give yourself three zero two taunts, right? That just stick on the board as well as clearing things off. Uh. I don't know if that's good, but it's just he didn't have a better answer to the Solarian. Like, I, I don't think these zero twos have much utility. So do you think he should have attacked first to get one less? Well, no, because it's better to, like, have an eventual stall than later, because he's not running into right. board space issues, but... Uh, 
I just think good was an overstatement. They're just kind yeah. of there, is what I think. Well, I mean, that's kind of what you could say about my casting. It's not necessarily mm. good, but it's definitely there. Say what you will. <laughs> so I disagree with that, but you're not going to bait me into directly complimenting me. So let's move on. <laughs> Dang it. One day. One day. Okay, let's see what's in the mage thief. Uh, the wand thief, sorry. Uh, the, the priest is the mage thief in this mirror, stealing all its cards. Yes. The, the wand thief uh, is the wand thief. Arcane breath is annoying because it could be so good, uh, but just doesn't have the dragons in his deck to synergize with it. So. <sighs> oh, he's so close to just killing Chonsu. Yeah. Do you ever take the allies and just believe in pop decking an elemental next turn? He needs card draw more than anything. You have to believe so hard. But the others didn't have that much usage at the moment. They each cleared just a, a yeah. mirror, which, okay, to be fair, they're gonna be apotheosis targets here, so. Sethic death. That's pretty good, I guess. You test the spell and spell vendor first with Apo. Okay. Yeah. How is he doing this again? It's just. <laughs> I think Blitz Chunks is so asking jaded the exact now that we're not thing. going nuts anymore about Sethic Apprentice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, the classic priest play of uh, Sethic Apprentice. Yeah. Classic. And he just rips even more targeting spells. Yeah, more heal, more targeting. It's absolutely insane. Can he get another Arcane Breath? No, he oh, just gets another, another Apprentice. <laughs> Chansu, Chansu, Chansu. He did make the okay, somewhat. Needs help. Uh, sorry, I just wanted to bring up that he brought, made the interesting choice of targeting a minion with Renew instead of his face, which has the benefit of getting another spell, obviously, but the downside <gasps> of not healing. And Blitzchung, in the end, just throws it down. He sees himself as too far behind to ever wrestle this one back. And I think Chonsu, to be perfectly honest, was just about as surprised as we were as he's going through to the upper bracket finals to place off against Tom. I mean, make no mistake, Blitzchung was in an awful spot, but... I would never concede that early as mage. There are outs in the deck. A single magic trick can turn into another evocation. He had another apprentice in hand. Yes, that turn was probably fireball their apotheosis minion and be sad, but we've seen it turn around from the mage spot just as early as yesterday with Alan on the priest being ahead for like four turns in a row, but you know couldn't close out the game before another prime was generated, that type of thing. I'm honestly really shocked to see that from Blitzchung. Yeah, I think Blitzchung at that point in the series was feeling pretty dejected. He, uh, you know, had seen twice that insane combo of Apprentice plus the uh, Sethic Veil Weaver, which, uh, you know, to be fair, again, like you said, we all realized he was very far behind. I guess he just estimated he was unrecoverably far behind, which there's always something you can do in Mage, to be fair. But if you don't want to play out the tiny percentage chance to pull things back, no one's going to force you. Blitzchung is not out of the runnings quite yet. He still is going to be fighting things out in the lower bracket match up against Possessi, who of course